All right, today I'm going to do a little tutorial on a couple of video editing programs that I use for making my videos that I post on YouTube. Uh, this is by request. Um, you know, probably people use various different types of programs. I mean, there's you know simple stuff out there. And of course, that's I think supplied like on Windows, like Windows Movie Maker. Um, I've really never used that, and it's not really, you know, set up for high definition. Um, the two programs that I use are, and then of course if you use a Mac, um, there's all sorts of programs that are more advanced actually from what I've seen, and I don't have any software like that, or I don't use Mac, everything I use is Windows. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial about, uh, you know, a couple of programs. One of them is uh, AVS Video Editor, and the other one is Pinnacle Studio 14. And actually, Pinnacle Studio 14 I use, you know, more often than uh, AVS Video Editor. So, but yeah, I'll go ahead and do a video of both of them here. So, let's say you've already shot your video. You know, I use a flip video camera. This is one of three that I own. I may be getting a fourth one because one of them is getting kind of wore out. But uh, yeah, I got a little USB on the side here. So once you've shot your video, of course, hook it up to the computer and uh, download your videos. And before I go further, if you got a GoPro, <clears throat> that's what I use for my uh, dash cam videos, uh, especially when I'm in Mexico, that's when I use this the most. But it's a first generation GoPro Hero. And what I do is take the little card out, the memory card, and usually you can leave it in there if you've got an adapter. This is a 32 gig card. And then what I have is one of these card adapters right here. And I'll just stick it in, I believe it's, yeah, stick it in there like that and then connect it up to the USB and download your videos that way so now what I usually do when I download them is I'll download them to my videos um, now I have a 256 gig solid state drive so there's not a lot of space on here but I could put it on a bigger hard drive if I wanted to and save them there but since I'm doing quick video edits and uploads for the most part. I just download them here and then that way it's easy access for my programs to find them. So, alright, we'll just say I've already got them downloaded. Now I'm ready to go ahead and open up Pinnacle. This is Pinnacle Studio Ultimate Edition HD uh, version 14 and I'm ready to, it automatically is set up to my videos folder anyway. So let's say I've already got them there and I want to find the latest ones that I did. This will be for a video that's already been posted. Um, yeah. This is the start of my hard drive video, the six terabyte that you probably saw before this one. And Let's say, yeah, all the rest of these, they're pretty much in order. I go from oldest to newest, so they're easy to find, and they're in order, basically. So, that's usually set up in the tools. In the, I think it's uh, <coughs> uh, in the setup. Project preferences, video preferences. I have to refresh myself a little bit here because I'm so used to doing this. Um, let's see, toolbox. Okay, yeah, I believe. Yeah, this is how you set it up. Find my videos. Flip share, of course I use a flip camera, so that's where it's going automatically. A lot of my video clips, unless 
it's the GoPro and then I set it up in a separate folder like GoPro videos. So you want to set up your destination folder ahead of time in order to get your videos. So those are all the clips basically. But uh, yeah, I mean it's going to take a little finagling here. Um, let's see. So I've already got most of these here. So this is all part of the one video that I've already posted, all these little clips. So now you want to bring it into range. Now let's say you want to edit one of them. You know, let's say you don't need all these clips yet. So let's back it up to here. And then there's a little delete uh, trash can there. So you can delete those. And we'll open this up a little bit. Okay, let's say... Well, I didn't like this portion here, so I'll bring it to about, you know, I'll spread it out, find out where it is that I I want to edit in the particular video clip, and we'll say it's right here, so there's a little razor blade. Splice it, make sure it's highlighted in the dark area, let me move it there, and want we'll make sure it's highlighted in the darker grayish blue, and then click delete, so that takes it out. That you, that's the portion you didn't want. Um, you know, same goes for any any of the clips. Um, when you're rendering now, if it was if you made a mistake, of course, you know, which sometimes I do, then I'll just go back in the edit and say undo deleted clips. Of course, you know, I try to set this up to where it can catch all this, but yeah, it's not getting it all, but yeah very top of the edit menu is undo deleted clips and boom that clip is brought back so it's not taken out you know and then you can go back to working on the video and finding a clip that you need to edit or whatever um, again these programs I, I've, I've been using Pinnacle for years I started with Pinnacle Studio 9.4 when I was doing my old home videos that you probably saw, you know, a lot of my vacation videos, you know, the earlier ones from 2001 to 2010 in my um, in my playlist on my channel. So, yeah, and so let's say, yeah, okay, I want to go ahead and go back to adding clips. Now you can go and add one by one, edit each one. You know, I usually try to record. I'm usually pretty careful when I record. You know, I know where I want to stop at. Um, you know, try to start and, you know, try not to make any mistakes. If I do, then I'll either, you know, go back. I'll probably just delete the clip on my camera or I'll come back and edit. You know, I can usually see I want to come here. I want to take out a portion that I was quiet on. You know, I didn't really say a whole lot, which you can tell on the audio track at the bottom, you know, if there's a little silent space. So I want to splice that and then take it over to the other side where there is audio. Whoops, see that's how I make a mistake. So let me go back to undo deleted clips like that. Now, okay, so I'll usually bring the thing back to here, this little uh, I don't know what you want to call it. The uh, I don't even know what it's called. So this little thingamajig, and it's already highlighted. So we'll click the delete button, take that out, like that, and then we're ready to go back to the main clip. So yeah, in this purpose, again, I'll undo the undo deleted clips right there and we'll see you've already finished um, doing your uh, editing now you can go through here and adjust the audio if there's a um, an area uh, you know again that's quiet you don't want to delete it but uh, you know you can actually come here and you can use a little, yeah, once you get onto the little audio bar there, there's a little speaker. You can, once that little speaker appears, you can hold the left mouse down to raise the audio up. 
Now normally you can do one section or you can do the whole thing. If it's too quiet you can just grab the, the whole audio track, raise the volume up a little or lower it or you can go into a little setting here. It's right above the uh, video track here. Uh, it's got the audio setting so you've got the setting already highlighted that you want to increase the volume. Go to your volume bar here and it's normally set to zero. There's a minus five to a plus six, but it can go all the way down. You could take, yeah, you know, sometimes my audio or my videos are flagged by YouTube because of music, background music. It's copywritten, you know. I don't know what's copywritten, and it's, you know, especially in Mexico, there's music playing all the time, so it makes it real difficult for me to get, you know, record videos and then it get flagged by YouTube because there's a few of them that are blocked in my country or blocked where you can't view them and you know stuff like that and it's really aggravating because you know there's nothing you can do about that so let's say if you know you think there's some questionable music in the background you can come to the audio portion and uh, you can bring the audio bar all the way down where it'll mute it out now it looks like it's muted all the way to the end of the video so I don't want that so we'll say I want to go to here and then I want to yeah, highlight that and it goes to a light blue and then raise the actually you can do it twice so you can silence that portion and bring it to there and bring the audio back to normal level so this little section here is basically muted so yeah it's it gets a little complicated when you come to when it comes to the audio portion so you know now that's one little trick too if you're doing videos and there's background music you're allowed up to 30 seconds if I'm not mistaken you know for to avoid the copyright infringement that YouTube could flag so if you're able to record the video if there's music in the background just stop you know after about 30 seconds and then start again you know or when the music goes off or changes or whatever so that uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only way I know to <laughs> avoid some of the background music in the videos. But yeah, this is just, you know, I'm just doing a brief rundown on, you know, on this software. But usually everything I, I do is pretty much preset. Now let's say you're all done, you're ready to go ahead, you're done editing. You can bring the clips back to normal. And then you can click the little, go to the beginning, go to home. So it brings everything to the beginning. Now I'll go to make movie um, you know, here everything's all set up you can either set it up for you know if you're if it's home video you can actually make a DVD click the disc which should be right there if I can get everything in the camera here yeah disc is right here you've got disc file tape and web now you can actually upload this project direct to YouTube but I've had issues with this in the past um, you know sometimes it goes sometimes it doesn't you know, sometimes there's a time limit that won't allow you to do it. That's, I know my flip software that I used to use had time limits, and I just basically stopped using it. Um, but yeah, you can go to disk, select DVD, automatic quality, uh, go to your disk settings if you've got a disk already in there, and select everything. Usually it's pretty much automatic, you know, progressive encoding, re-encode entire movie. Automatic quality is good because it can adjust for the size of the disk that the and uh, basically for the size of the video if it's too big for the disc it can compress it down to fit on the single layer 4.7 gig DVD and uh, stuff like that so um, but in this case we're gonna make a file so we can actually yeah, because this disc is selected I need to go back and just close this and go back to file right here alright so file selected now this camera records in HD 720p. Uh, you can select HD 1080. You can upgrade it. You know, I think for 720 for low low end HD, upgrading it to high end HD is not a big deal. It's a bigger file, um, but I usually leave it as uh, 720. You know, I don't see any improvement honestly. So the 720 is a much it's a smaller file than 1080p, so it takes less time to upload. 
Um, but if you got the cameras that aren't HD, you know, you can always select full size, you know, best quality, you know, go up to the um, standard definition. It's usually around 480, I think, 720 by 480, something like that. So, anyway, yep, so everything is pretty much set at HD 720p. And then, yeah, it's, just, it's going to save it to the C drive, which again is pretty full. Yeah, so um, I don't keep these videos on this hard drive for very long. You know, I'll usually store them or I'll just, you know, delete them once I get them posted to YouTube. And then you want to create file. Once everything is set, you're ready to go, everything is done. Then, uh, yep, click create file. And then I want you to give it a name. So, you know, you can name it whatever you want. And once you give it a name, just click save and it'll start. And then once it's done, just come back to your folder, you know, where the, the complete rendered video is completed and you can upload it to YouTube. So, I'm not going to do this whole video process. It'll take time and I've already done this, you know, so I'll just cancel and we'll close this out. Now it'll ask you if you want to save the project. You know, you can save it if you want, but again, it's going to take up space. If you've already finished the video, no need to save it. I just click no and it's deleted. So, <clears throat> and that's how you use Pinnacle Studio 14. So, um, next is the AVS Video Editor. Now again, this is a program, I only use this mostly, um, I've used this for my, you know, GoPro videos, I've used it for the other regular videos as well, and uh, yeah, it works pretty good. It's kind of along the same lines as uh, Pinnacle Studio. Um, you know, there's uh, this one, let's see, yeah. Um, yeah, you, know, you can usually go to media library. It's already not uh, usually it's not selected. You have to, you know, this one doesn't seem to save the settings for some reason. I always have to tell it to, you know, import. Then I got to find my folder. Uh, okay, let me just go to libraries. Yep, videos. And if it's on my flip camera, then I want to go to flip data and videos there and there's my clips now here you kind of have to know which ones are part of the movie clip because they're all saved on this one folder you know by number so um, and this one because it saves newest to oldest okay we'll say this one yeah starts here so We'll go ahead and open the first one, and yeah, see this one. You know, again, it's a little bit more complicated. Once I know which one to start with, that's file number six three zero eight. Then uh, yeah, and it'll put a numerical order here. So six three. Let's see, six three zero eight right there. So next we will want to highlight everything past it basically because I know that's where the last folder is and then I click open so it'll bring all those video clips in just like that. So and again now you can bring them all in you know to I can usually grab them all like that in order and then drag them to the track right here. So now everything's highlighted. And again, you can go through and trim it, you know, same way. Um, set that, go to This one's yeah, again. It's a little bit different. You have to you know grab the slide bar. That's what I was thinking of before. Slide bar, and uh, bring it all the way to the beginning. But you know, again, if I'm pretty satisfied with my videos and there's very little editing, then I'm just going to go ahead and bring them on down. And if there's some editing I need to do, then I'll go and 
I'll bring the video clips down to the point where I think, okay, I need to do some adjusting here, get my adjustments done, then bring the rest of the video clips in to the track and set it up. So now in this one, you know, let's say everything is done, you know, again, it's along the same lines, you know, if you if you want to do some trimming, there's your edit bar there, you know, you can bring the slide bar to here. Uh, uh, what I do, yeah. This one's real sensitive too. You have to kind of get used to it. So I want to open this thing up, and we'll just say I want to cut this section out. So I want to trim it there. Yeah, you can actually increase the increase the speed. Like I said, I don't use this one very often. I have to finagle with this one, but I want to yeah, get out of that screen. I want to yep, right there. That's what I was looking for. A little trim section is just if you want to get fine-tuning trimming down to the micro, you know, the millisecond basically. But this little selection over here is your splicer and then Slide it over, I'll say to here, splice it again, and go back and highlight it, and then click the little red X and delete it out so it's gone. And yeah, I mean, this one I don't use as often. I use this one, you know, more for GoPro videos. Uh, they can handle the bigger files better. Um, I mean, Pinnacle can do it, but I've had, for some reason, there's some issues that I've had in the past, and I'll just switch over to this one. If there's very little editing, especially, I'll come to this one um, for GoPro videos. But, uh, yeah, so... Okay, and uh, trying to think of what else here. The audio, yeah, you can uh, adjust your audio. This one is pretty much you know, similar to Pinnacle as well. Um, usually my audio is pretty good. But, uh, let's see, yeah, here's your audio mixing for other music. You can add a second audio track. Same way with Pinnacle, you can add a music track if you want, or um, <coughs> um, another file if you don't care about, you know, YouTube flagging it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I think, let me see, yeah, usually, yeah, this one you can actually remove the audio entirely. Just have a silent movie. <laughs> so there's no audio at all. Uh, yeah, so I just want that one section. Again, I don't use this one very often. It says hide audio track, and I've got it selected here, but it still wants to take all the audio out altogether. Um, yeah, everything the project set to 16 by 9. I like the widescreen. Everything is just widescreen now. So. And let's see, audio. You can import audio files. You got MP3s you want to add uh, to your project. You can add an image if uh, you're just doing simple audio and no video. You can add an image. Click on and add the image there. Um, in the settings here. Yeah, usually everything is set where it needs to be. Processing. Yeah, normally, you know, I don't, I'm, like I said, I just don't use this one very often. It's pretty much just general for the bigger videos that uh, sometimes Pinnacle um, Pinnacle to me is easy. You know, this one, like I said, I don't use it very often. You know, I paid for both, both of them, but prefer to use 
Pinnacle Studio more often. Um, you have voice, you can add a mic, add your own audio. It's a pretty neat feature. I've done that on my gaming channel a little bit. It's a little more complicated. And actually, that's another thing. I do use um, this for, for gaming. This is a better program to edit, you know, for gaming because the audio is right there. You just add the audio track and boom, you know, just line it up and you're ready to record it. So, but anywho, let's see, I'll just go back to my projects here. I'm ready to produce. Everything's pretty much ready to go. So I want to do a file, disk, uh, create a MP4 for your device, something to watch later, or you can upload it directly to the web. I've never done, you know, a up, direct upload to YouTube from this program. I just prefer to do it on my own. I'll just, you know, make a file, click Next. What type of file do you want? This one gives you the options from AVI, DVD, QuickTime Movie, uh, an MP4, MPEG, it's usually like an MPEG 2, a Windows Movie Video, uh, MKV, um, which is more closer to HD, or it can actually burn you a Blu-ray as an MT, M2TS, uh, or just go to a TS or a GIF file. It'll actually create a GIF file for you. Haven't tried that feature, but uh, that'd be pretty neat. I might have to try that. Um, everything is pretty much set in your profile settings. You've got the different settings on how you want it to record um, or produce the, uh, the file. So being that MP4 is probably the way to go. Everything is usually set. It's um, actually, I'm sorry, an MPEG. Yeah, you could do either one. Any of them are, up, are uploadable to YouTube. AVIs, MP4s. I leave it as a AVI. Um, yeah, it's got 720. It's got 1080p. So it'll actually, you know, up convert it from 720 to 8 to 1080 as well um, as an AVI. Now, MPEGs are much bigger files. MP4s, of course, are more compressed. Um, but uh, they're more set up for Apple and iPad. Um, yeah, usually I'll just leave it the AVI or the MPEG-2. MPEG-2's got the options. There's no... Yeah, it's all standard definition for your MPEG-2's. If you don't have an HD camera, it's just recording in standard HD 720 to 480. Um, that's usually the max you can go on those. So, yeah, AVI is... A good setting for a video file. Um, yeah, 720 or 1080 if you've got an HD. Slideshow in 1080. But yeah, HD videos, there's your two options there. So, yeah, we'll set it as, uh, oops, 1080. Click next. And it'll start creating. Once you click the create, you can actually. Um, okay, select your destination folder in my videos, give it a name, or, you know, if you've got a folder already set up, you know, give it a, you know, set the, set the folder up previously in your, in your, uh, on your computer somewhere, and then, you know, once you've got it labeled, click your destination, you know, it'll be your, select your destination folder in your output, so... You know, once you find it, you click it there. My videos, give it, give it a name if you want. And uh, you know, once you've done that, you can actually let it play a sound, so it'll tell you it's done. And um, you know, sometimes I'm doing other things and I'll forget. So it plays a sound, it'll remind me. Okay, it's done. And after it's done, you find the video, upload it to YouTube. So um, again, I there's probably there's a lot more on the AVS video editor. I just haven't explored it and don't use don't use a whole lot it's just simple you know import the video you know splice a little if I have to or add a second audio track if it's for a gaming um, a gaming video and let it render and once it's done upload so yeah it's you kind of have to practice with it so hope that helps you I know this 
working on the AVS video editor was not that great, but you know, that's I like I said, I'm just not as familiar with it as I am with Pinnacle. So uh, both of them are good programs. I recommend them and uh, hope it helps you if you're doing videos or even gaming. You know, if you're not gaming on the PC, which I don't because mine are all old school games. You see my RVR 2.0 channel. A lot of those are just you know hooking it up, downloading on the on a Pinnacle Dazzle, and um, you know making the video that way. So it's basically going through the gaming console, and then I'm just capturing what's being shown on the on the TV and downloading the, the video and audio file, and of course recording a audio track with a headset. So yeah, more advanced gamers, you know that do it from the PC. I haven't even learned how to do that yet, so, you know, one day perhaps, but anyway, that's it. That's a little rundown on uh, editing video files and, uh, you know, so they're prepared to upload to YouTube. Hope that helps you, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.